in sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engines run. We have a liftoff. Lift off on Apollo 11. to uh, Planet, uh, Planet Comic Cons, PC, KCTV. Uh, we are here at U.S. Toy Costume and Magic Shop today. Uh, we uh, want to make sure to uh, invite you all to the store. We are open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day now. Uh, we do have reduced hours, but uh, we're open. We're, we're here. We've got lots of great cleaning that we've been doing, and we're ready and open for business. And we do have our masks. I've taken mine off for this broadcast, uh, but, you know, we've been having a great time with people coming in and picking up graduation decorations, makeup, uh, wigs, so on and so forth. Um, we want to make sure to take a minute to thank our other sponsors from Planet Comic Con. And then today I want to introduce you to you someone. Uh, this is uh, Valkyrie Britannia. Uh, and we're going to learn a lot about the work that she's been doing. And she's got a craft with a couple of techniques that she's going to be working with us on. Um, so, Valkyrie, hi, how are you doing, my friend? Hi, thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming on and being a part of this. We uh, we, we got a lot of stuff to get to know you because you're still kind of getting to be known under this moniker. And out on Facebook, you're doing a little bit of a rebranding and such. So tell tell me about Valkyrie Britannia. Uh, Valkyrie Britannia started in 2016 mm -hmm. and I had seen a lot of people doing the foam smithing at Planet Comic Con and I wanted to try it so I took a week off of my job from the uh, work and decided to, to try it and it was really hard. <laughs> um, I kept trying and now I am where I'm at now which I didn't think I would ever be doing what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. So, so you've gone from kind of the self-teaching foam smithing, and now you're taking commissions uh, on Redbubble and with headdresses, and <laughs> you you're making like you're, you're sending out your uh, order sheets uh, for people to buy, and people are are purchasing your designs. Uh, yeah, in order to make their own props and costume pieces, right? Yeah, it didn't start out that way. It was for fun. But then uh -huh. people actually started approaching me for commissions. And I thought I would try it, which commissions are always scary because you don't know if the person is going to like what you make. And my first commission ever was a breastplate. And I made it for a girl and it ended up falling apart. And I was horrified. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I fixed it for her as best as I could at the time. And, you know, just thinking about how that went and how things are now like yeah things don't fall apart now <laughs> as much like sometimes uh -huh. they do but i try to fix it when i can <laughs> well dustin's just oh i forgot to say thank you to dustin evans photography uh he's there behind the scenes making sure that we uh keep on track and everything else he's just put up your red bubble site there uh tell us a little bit about it um, I used to do Redbubble in college because I went to an art college and I completely forgot about it for years after. And I thought, well, I'd like to try to make some money on the side. And um, I first started up uploading pictures of my Valkyrie Sanctuary art and story, which um, I've been working on and off since I was like a kid. <laughs> I'm hoping it can become something. Um, so I started uploading those first. And I didn't hear from anybody in a long time. And then all of a sudden, some guy out of the blue bought four Britannia stickers. And I was like, whoa, and I was like so excited. And so I went ahead and just started drawing more like Valkyrie themed artwork. And now I'm starting to do fan art because people are like sending me messages asking, can you draw so and so person? And as long as like, you know, I'm within all the legal rights, then I'll draw the fan art and put it up there. Um, Redbubble tends to be very strict about a lot of stuff. Okay, excellent. Sounds good. You went you went to an art college. Have you yeah. always been a hippie, or is it or is it just something later in life you evolved into? A hippie, you know. <laughs> no, I've been drawing. I always tell people I've been drawing uh, since I was inside my mom's stomach. I'm sure she's got drawings still in there from 
when I was there. <laughs> like on the cave walls. <laughs> yeah, like on the cave walls <laughs> in her stomach. So, uh, so you've been busy transforming your art into a business and, and keeping yourself afloat and everything else. How difficult is that? Um, it's very difficult. Um, there is an entrepreneur I've been listening to recently called Gary V. He mostly deals with people who um, do the kind of business where you send something off to get made, it, you know, manufactured and sent off. I, he doesn't do a lot with artisans like me. Um, but he does have a lot of good advice. And, you know, one of them is just do it, even if nobody is watching, even if nobody's buying your stuff, just do it. And eventually everything's going to fall into place. So with like quarantine happening, uh, that's pretty much all I've been like eating, sleeping, breathing, all of this art. That's why I keep posting so much. And I haven't actually got to hang out with anybody <laughs> or talk to anybody recently. Well, no, none of us are really getting to hang out yet. So, yeah. yeah. We're, we're there with you. And you have been putting out some great content and people can find it at Valkyrie Britannia. Uh, and uh, you, you keep that pseudonym for your personal page as well. Uh, and so yeah. uh, mm -hmm. they, they can see you, but you do most, mostly you want people to find you on Instagram, right? Or TikTok. Yeah, Instagram is my portfolio, but um, like I said, I've been watching Gary V and he says that if you don't evolve with the times, then like you might get left behind. And so I started using TikTok, which was really awkward for me because I'm I'm not old, but <laughs> I have I struggle with some of the newer apps and um, I'm starting to get a little bit of the hanging of the hanging uh, of the editing in TikTok. It's really awkward, but yeah. I've been using that a lot. I, I I fully understand. I'm fully coming into an understanding uh, as a guy who started off with the start of digital media and digital <laughs> editing. I am no longer uh, cool. Uh, I am no longer cutting edge. I, I am an old fart and uh, I'm enjoying my curmudgeon days. So I, I understand the uh, difficulty in that. Yeah. Um, hey, I wanted, we're coming up uh, on, on the seven minute mark here. Uh, and so I wanted to go ahead and just take a second here. Um, Folks, you've heard me talk about Rockstar Wigs here at uh, U.S. Toy. We got them into the shop right before uh, Planet Comic Con. And uh, they are lace front wigs. So for extra styling, you've got the uh, extra lace here at the front. These are some heavy, heavy curls. Uh, the screen is mirrored, so I have a hard time with placement. Uh, but these are perfect for styling and we've got a wide selection here at the store we want you to check them out here in uh the next couple of weeks we're going to have pros and cons cosplay come and help us out with styling those wigs but uh, that's our little plug from us toy i do want to point out what we've got the time next week here we're going to be talking to bruce holt with crazy costumes with bruce but on tuesday night you can tune in and, and talk uh talk in comics with uh chris and bill and then on Thursday night with Chris uh, and John, you can talk to Elizabeth Maxwell and Kara Eberly. And uh, you've got lots of great things coming up. Take a look at that. That's just fantastic. Uh, some, uh, I, I think they're from Ruby, uh, the anime. Uh, so, uh, Captain, my Captain, you've got some crafting for us that you're doing today. And uh, something special you picked up over at U.S. Toy, right? Yeah, I want to thank you at Toy first of all for um, supplying most of the crafting supplies that I'm going to do for the activity today. Um, I actually went shopping over there and I found these helmets. You can actually find them at US Toy. So if you want to try to do this um, project, you can find these there. Um, they're actually very paper thin. Oh yeah, those those guys are are meant to just be a little cute part of thing i think they retail for like a buck 15 or something yeah i like you could blow on it and it would just like fall apart sure. so so what are you gonna do with those what you got? Um, in the past when i've done uh tutorials for people um a lot of the kids are interested but unfortunately they can't like have any hands on the craft because i use so many tools that are either power tools or sharp knives. So I was trying to brainstorm a way for, um, well, parents and little kids to kind of do this. There, there's a few things the parents might have to help with, 
um, but mostly the kids can get their hands on it and work on it too. Um, and, and it doesn't have to be just for kids, like anybody starting off, or if you need like a costume really quick and you want to spruce it up, like this, the, the structure of this isn't too bad. And some of the uh, designs on it are pretty. So there was, there was a little to work with here. Um, here's one that I've plastered it. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna switch the camera really quick so people can see it a little closer. As you can see, it's got more 3D dimensional pieces on it. Uh, I added um, a fake horse hair um, fan thing on top. You don't have to use foam. You could probably use a, a fabric or like some people use a broom. I, I wouldn't use the broom, but there's there's different things you could do. Uh, were you going to say something? Yeah, tell me a little bit how you got from step A to step B, because there looks to be a number of steps in between A and B there. Well, I tried to keep it as simple as possible, so um, I'm going to go ahead and show everybody. So I'm going to put uh -huh. this off to the side right now. Okay. Okay. So we got your helmet. Uh, since they're so thin, I would recommend buying two. And I don't. I think I might have glued this together already. I glued most of it together. So this one's two, and it's it's got a little more strength so on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Compared to this, like this is like it's already bending, just sitting there. Mm -hmm. So I took two of them, and um, with um, some contact cement that US Toy provided, um, I'll put it on the screen. Mm -hmm. We had to go to the hardware store for that. That's that's the strong stuff. Yeah, some of the stuff wasn't at the store, so we can I can give a list to anybody who's interested after the uh, the stream. And I put the plastic dip, not plastic dip, uh, the contact cement on the top here. And then on the one that was going to go over it, I put it on the inside and you let that dry and get tacky and carefully stick it together um, because you're overlapping two of them. Um, what I did was only put glue on this top head part first. And then once they were stuck together, um, I went and did the sides to make it a little easier to stick together. Okay. Real, real quick. You said you have to let the the glue dry and get tacky before you stick them together. Uh -huh. So I, I just don't want to just put it, put it in there and smush them. Yeah. You'll, yeah. If you do that, it won't stick together as well. Um, you can, you can touch it, tap it. And if it's dry, but kind of tacky, then it's good to go. Okay. Um, now you could do either what I did with the other helmet was I added some pieces of foam on the inside here also to strengthen it. Um, I think I'll go ahead and do that first. So. <coughs> Here's some, um, oh, yes. And you're, you're just using basic craft foam right there. Yeah, this is from US Toy. It's Little Makers. It's six millimeter um, craft foam. Okay. Well, I, actually, we are out of that in stock now, uh, but we've, we've got some other foam available, but uh, yeah, there, you can get that at most craft stores. Just a yeah. little, little piece of foam. Okay. Um, I, I wanted this thickness because it would help with the rigidity for the, uh -huh. the side here. Because if you use like two millimeter, which is what you would find at Walmart or Hobby Lobby for kids, it's still going to be too thin. So you want like four millimeter and up, maybe not too uh -huh. big. So maybe so six. Yaya Han sells hers in the two millimeter, five millimeter, and 10 millimeter. Uh -huh. And then uh, I want to say SKS Prop sells his craft foam. In just about any size that you're looking for, up to ten. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, you can find that six millimeter, but it is hard to come up with. So, yeah, it doesn't have to be six millimeter. It just needs to have some of that rigidity. Okay. And what I just did, um, because the shape on these 
I'm not sure face guards um, are not exactly even um, I just did them one at a time and laid them on the foam and drew, drew it out and then glued it to the inside so this is one of the easy ones that kids can do and if if you are a kid out there and you do this project or you do it with your parent please post pictures i love to see pictures of people either wearing my items or you know just playing with the items that i have at the table when i um do conventions and even even if you're not a kid because I, I i know greg smith is probably watching uh greg you need to post pictures just saying uh i'm just going to call you out uh, but, uh, yeah, we got lots of cosplayers out there. So if you're going to try something like this, we'd love to see your work. Uh, not only Planet Comic Con, but U.S. Toy Magic and Costume Shop. Um, I'd normally use a box cutter for foam, but since I'm trying to make this more for kids, you can use scissors just fine. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to use a box cutter, I, I recommend your parent help you out with that part. smaller yeah that's that's part of the thing with tracing an image out isn't it that uh it's always just a little bit bigger than the thing you traced it on yeah so i i drew the line and then i laid it up against the face guard and i noticed there was still blue hanging out so i cut it down some more so it would mostly be hidden behind the face guard mm -hmm. and now i'm gonna um, I'm going to put contact cement on one side and where I want it to stick. I'm going to stick it, uh, put some contact cement on that side. Okay, excellent. Um, if you're doing this indoors like I am right now, please do it in a ventilated area or at least turn on the fan. I have my fan going on right now and I have my window slightly cracked because this stuff is very strong smelling. Yeah, I, I imagine... Uh, because it's got to be an adhesive, uh, it's got to be uh, something that really gets into you and uh, makes it a little difficult to think when you're doing it. Oh, yeah. I've gotten really bad headaches from working on something, and I was just really into working on it. And, yeah, I, I just I had to take some Advil. I had to lay down. It was not good. Mm -hmm. So, so once again, you know, for, for a beginning crafter, someone who's just getting into cosplay, you're putting the adhesive on both sides and then letting it dry until it's tacky uh -huh. be before you uh, set it into place, right? How, yeah. how long did it take for you to originally learn that uh, that technique? Um, I had to research online. Uh, I learned people when I, when I first started out were asked, uh, when I asked people like what I should look for for tutorials or whatnot, everybody says Evil Ted. He's like the great godfather of foam smithing and all that. And he was the one I learned from using the contact cement. Uh, in the past, I would use hot glue for everything. A lot of women tend to go crazy on hot glue. <laughs> I don't know why. And I realized how many things that I made that would fall apart while using uh, hot glue. So. I don't try to use that at all anymore, if I can help it. Sure. It's not terrible. It's just not great either for certain things, especially foam smithing. Uh-huh. Dust, Dustin wants to make sure everyone has access to Evil Ted there. He just threw up the, uh, threw up the link there to Evil Ted. Yeah, he has a lot of patterns and tutorials and supplies, like this glue pot that I use. It's I got that from his website. Mm-hmm. It's really good for storing the glue because um, it has a tendency to dry out. Sure. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this other side while I'm still waiting for the glue to get tacky. Um, you can use a Sharpie. I had a Sharpie around, but I can't find it. So I'm just using this chalk. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, when, when did you get into costuming? Because, you know, you went to art school, and now we should talk a little bit about the, the Casey Babes. Is that, that the group that you're volunteering with? 
Um, yeah, they were called Kansas City Babes, and then they went through a rebranding, and now they are Volunteer Casey. Volunteer Casey. Uh huh. Um, they kind of had trouble with guys wanting to help because they thought it was an organization for just women. So they thought we should probably rebrand it so guys won't assume it's just only for girls. <laughs> sure. Thank you, Dustin. And that was real quick. My gosh. So Volunteer KC, what does it do? Uh, they're a nonprofit organization in the greater Kansas City area. Uh -huh. And we help the homeless, we do uh, a lot of different charity work around town. It, like it started off only for homeless um, health, but now it's turned into gardening, uh, picking up trash at uh, different locations. Um, anybody who needs like work help in the city, it's just a lot of good things. Um, collecting, uh, we did a photo shoot one time. It was um, free boudoir photo shoots for women if they brought in uh, um, health supplies for women, like tampons and pads. That was really exciting. Uh huh. And and so you use you know the the art and the cosplay as a positive force. So do, do you guys get out and cosplay as a group? Is that kind of where? Oh no, <laughs> they're oh, okay. they're actually more of the fashion community in town. A lot of them are fashion photographers or do the Kansas City uh, Fashion Week. Uh huh. Um, so I I don't I haven't met a lot of them yet. Just the uh -huh. few that come to the uh, the gardening events right now, and a lot of them are models. Okay, so well, you do have quite a bit of background in the fashion stuff. Uh, and, and that's where a lot of your cosplay designs come from is, is you've got this Amazonian uh, warrior poet thing uh, going on with a lot of your your cosplays, a lot of your designs. What's what's going on with that? Um, well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with the fashion community a lot because they're actually my biggest uh, commission uh -huh. uh, customers. Uh, they like. Uh, they normally do like regular designer clothing, but every once in a while they, they would like to try something else, it's like more avant-garde, more artsy. So they'll come and contact me about certain pieces or commission that they'd like. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of the warrior maiden type archetype themes. Um, it's just something I've always liked since I was a little girl. Um, I grew up in a very traditional household where there was only one type of female and it was um, a very submissive kind of female. And one time I went to the video game store and I came across a picture of a Valkyrie, which actually ended up being my favorite video game. And it was so cool because she wore armor. And uh, so I fell in love with that and it's just kind of been a part of me ever since. This should be tacky. And it's sticking all over my fingers. All right. So it, it took there about six, seven minutes for the glue to dry to a point where it's tacky. Okay. Yeah. Tell you what, we're here at 25 minute mark. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about uh, another product that we've got here at US Toy, the Vivid Glitter. Let's see, uh, right there. So this is uh, the Chunky Vivid Glitter. We've got the Pixie Paint here. You can see some of it in my beard and on my tongue here. Um, actually, I'm gonna, we've got Candy here in the store with me. Candy, what's what's unique about all this glitter? What's unique about our glitters here at US Toy is they're all cosmetic grade glitters. Mm -hmm. um, so they're safe for your hair, they're safe for your face, they're safe for your body. Um, they're not going to cause permanent damage as far as if you get it in your eyes, it will be uncomfortable, it will bother you, but it won't hurt you. So co cosmetic grade glitter that you can get here at US Toy, and a lot of it's designed for the uh, face painting community is why we brought it in, right? Uh, face painting, um, body artists who do body painting, um, 
uh, our, our local area queens uh -huh. um, and burlesque community also enjoy our glitters. And we have it in a variety of mediums from a wax base to a lotion base to a gel base as far as our balms and creams and pixie paints go. And then we have everything from bio glitter, um, fine so, bio glittered and chunky bio glitter to I mean, you name we, it. We got, we've got a full we got supply. <laughs> we've got a full supply of, of glitter and, and everything else. Uh, we want you to come check out the full line of makeup here at U.S. Toy Costume and Magic. Uh, Valkyrie, what you got going on there? Oh, um, since uh, I wanted to keep the supplies pretty simple, um, since a heat gun is probably not something I would want kids to play with, um, there's another way to make these face guards more straight uh -huh. and what i did was add just a tab of foam uh -huh. to give it more leverage okay. and so that's what i'm doing right now while i'm letting some of this glue and stuff dry do you think we could do a, a, a little game yeah you got a game you got a game that you want to do okay yeah you so um, how we're going to do this is uh, whoever responds first in the comments uh, will get your name after the live stream and uh, get your contact info. And I'll send you a sticker from Redbubble. Just tell me which one you want. I've drawn a lot of them. Some of them are really old paintings from way back in the day. So that's cool, too, if you want one of those. Um, let's start with, um, so I have this statue here. I named her Hypatia. She's a teacher in history. And the question is, what country is she from? What country is Hypatia from? Uh huh. What in, country is, yeah. is Hypatia from? So you want them to comment in? Yeah, in the comment in the here? comments, and whoever's first will get your contact info afterwards. There'll be a few more of these throughout the live stream, so don't worry if you didn't get this one. Uh -huh. so what I did was. <laughs> So that's absolutely fantastic. Um, we uh, we got lots of things that that you're doing. Um, so how much how much foam do you think you added to those helmets to uh, get to a point where you were at? What because there's a lot of embellishment between the, the glue and the two, and then the piece of art that you've put together. Yeah, um, it's not too much, but um, I have these pieces here. A lot of these I've pre-made a long time ago. Uh -huh. uh, I use cake molds um, in a lot of, oops, I'll switch the camera so you can see that better. In a lot of my costume pieces, a lot of cosplayers do. Um, some of these are used for jewelry. Uh-huh. So people pour metal into them. I use a mixture of Warbler, uh, Epoxy Sculpt, and, and Foam Clay. That's what I've used on the helmet today because it's very lightweight. Uh, so, so like the SKS Foam Clay or something like uh, Model Magic or something? Yeah, you could use anything like that. Um, if, you if you want to buy any online, just message the seller and ask for a non-food grade one, and it will knock off at least two or three dollars from your purchase, because you don't have to worry about the safety of eating anything from it. Because sure. hopefully you're not eating. Hopefully you're not eating the foam clay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and, and you know, it, it is one of the uh, more ex inexpensive ways to do it is to go with the Crayola. Um, oh my gosh, Model Magic, and we do carry that here at US Toy. Um, but there's there's all sorts of opportunities to get foam clay online uh, and just depending on high, how high quality you want to get. So you just stuck those into the cake mold, just took the foam foam clay, mm -hmm. stuck it in there, evened it out, and then let it dry? Yeah, I have one here that I smushed. <laughs> the backside isn't that great because I was you're supposed to keep it flat while it's dry. Can you change driving. cameras? I'm sorry, what? Can you change cameras for me? Oh, yeah. No worries. Okay. There you go. Uh, the back is kind of 
messed up because you're supposed to keep it flat while it's drying, but I was moving things around for the live stream. So it kind of got wibbly wobbly. Um, if you want to flatten out the back, you could just take a Dremel or sandpaper and flatten it out, but it pops out just like that. Neat. And then you can paint it with whatever, right? Or do you yeah, foam clay, it? after it's dry, it's ready to go. Um, a, a thing I like about foam clay is it's flexible. Uh huh. It's not like, don't try to rip it in half or anything, but if you need it to go around rounder shapes, like the helmet, like it bends just, just fine. Mm -hmm. um, this is one brand I use. It's, it's not my favorite. Sometimes I use this for filler stuff. It's from TNT Cosplay. Yeah. Um, the other one that I really like, but it's kind of expensive and it's from Australia is the Lumen Workshop uh, foam, foam clay. Mm -hmm. It's really good. It gets higher detail than the TNT cosplay foam. Sure. So I glued on the tabs for people who don't have a heat gun. And uh -huh. now these are like pretty much straight. Okay. This one's a little long. If, if you work it, it'll go into place. And I'm going to put this on the head so it's easier to work with. And now you get to pick out whatever pieces you want to put on the, the helmet. You're going to glue them on the same way with the contact cement. And anything that's sticking out that you can't get the big old contact cement brush into, you'll use uh, super glue. This is one of the ones I use. Okay. So what did I do? I did that for the helmet. And uh, so if you decide to do this, I would pick out your piece, your um, your cake mold pieces first and just do a whole bunch of them. That way, when you get to this part, you just have them all ready. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stick that one up there. Put the contact cement on the back of your piece. And you're also going to put it where you're going to stick it on the helmet. Um, with foam clay, anything that's like kind of sticking out, you got to watch out for because it will rip. So if you can keep it as flush to the helmet as possible, that would be great. Yeah. That way you won't accidentally knock it off later and have to put it back. You can use Warbla and all these other um, items that I mentioned. They're just a little more expensive. Okay. Yeah, we do have thermoplast uh, here at the store. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we need to get more of a selection of, of foam craft. I'll see what we can do about that or craft foam. And, uh, what was, what was the other, or the, the foam, foam clay. clay? Yeah. Foam because clay. that's easier for kids to play with because thermoplastics burn and they hurt and they smell. And I just wouldn't leave a kid alone, you know, working with that. Sure. I wouldn't leave most, most cosplayers alone. Be the adult <laughs> worship. Yeah, I can't tell you how many burns I've had from thermoplastics over the years. They just, it's not good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you're just going through a bunch of designs that you had and, and gluing them on the helmet, right? Yeah, I have a lot of like angels and floral frilly stuff. So I'm trying to pick through and make something that that's more fitting of like a Roman helmet, uh -huh. um, like more of the swirlies, flourishes. If like you have no idea how to decorate one, there's tons of pictures online, historical pictures. Um, this one isn't exactly historical, but this is what I have. So I'm, I'm making it look as close as I can. Sure. Well, you've, you've been doing this art thing for quite a while. Um, you're in a sketchbook in, in the New York library, right? What's, what's up with that? Yeah. Um, uh, there was a there's a thing called the sketchbook project in New York and I wanted to join but at the time they weren't taking anybody there wasn't even like a wait list or anything you you just kind of you would log in and they're like we're not taking any right now and I luckily got in and was chosen to be part of the uh, they have a tour that they do before they finally rest all the books in the library 
um, my my blah, 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 my sketchbook went on tour around the U.S. and then um, now it's housed at the library for anybody to check out. And if you can't make it to Brooklyn, New York, um, there's a link online where you can see what I've drawn. Um, they scanned all the pages except for one, and I keep contacting them to scan it. So I hope they can get that in there because one of the one of the pages is missing. Dustin's pulled that up for us. Oh, that's that's sweet. Yeah, and it's a sketchbook, so you know it's not perfect. It's just like ideas in my head that I I wrote out, and I decided uh -huh. that I was gonna do a series. So I I have another sketchbook for the library, but I haven't been able to turn it in because of COVID. So eventually, uh -huh. I'll I'll give that to the library. Uh huh. Neat. So. Valkyrie Britannia. Did we talk about the history of that name? No, we haven't yet. What? Where does that come from? Is uh, I mean, I, I know each of the terms together, but is there a character that you kind of modeled yourself after? Uh, well, for people who don't know, my first name is Brittany. Ersi is my middle name, um, and my uncle gave me the nickname Britannia a long time ago just to be funny, but I thought it sounded cool. And then years later, I was on the internet and I found the statue and I was like, this statue looks so cool. Like it makes me think of a Valkyrie. And it was actually Britannia, the um, human personification of Great Britain. Um, I actually, have, this is a propaganda piece, but I, I love it so much because I think it's beautiful. And here is Britannia. I think it was after World War One or two, shaking hands with. Uh, this is America, Colombia, and this is France, Marianne, uh -huh. and it, they're they're doing like a peace pact. Oh, neat! Yeah, that's very groovy. So, uh, so have you just identified as Valkyrie Britannia then? coming from Brittany and Britannia since you were a kid? Like, did you used to make up drawings and stories about this character? Uh, well, the Britannia character didn't come until 2014, but when I was a kid, I used to draw a lot of angels. And um, all the angels are, well, if you're like a Christian, angels are usually men. So when I found out Valkyrie were kind of like angels, but they were women, that was very cool to me. Um, I was kind of like a tomboy growing up, like, not that I didn't like to be girly, but I was the kind of kid that climbed trees, fought swords, and run around barefoot. Like, <laughs> so I like the idea of a woman in armor charging into battle. That's cool for me. Mm -hmm. Nice, very groovy. Yeah, I'm gonna do another sticker challenge thingy. Okay. Uh, I want the Easy. audience to what? name these characters and you have to spell it right. They're from Wonder Woman. Uh-huh. <laughs> See if they can stand up straight. So they, oh. they, they have to give the names of those characters from Wonder Woman. Uh-huh. Okay. A and then it's gonna be uh, another sticker from your red bubble page. Yeah. So you have to identify those two uh, characters from Wonder Woman. Uh, how awesome was it for you to see Wonder Woman come to life? Oh, okay. I, I'm not a big fan of Wonder Woman. I do not like the comics. I think they're goofy. <laughs> they, <laughs> they are a product of their times. Sure. Um, but the movie, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm in there like, yeah, yeah, I love this. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm looking forward to the new one that's coming out soon, the, the new Wonder Woman. Uh -huh. 1984. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, too. I'd like to see if uh, DC can continue on some of the success they had with the first movie, because I think Wonder Woman was the best thing that they've been able to produce here in the last decade or so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, everyone, make sure you you uh, get the spelling of those two characters up in the chat for us. We'll get in touch with you get, and get you a sticker from her red bubble page. Um, we're, we're at at the 40 minute mark here. Uh, okay. I, wanna, uh, are, I think we'll move on to like the painting part. Okay, excellent. 
That, yeah. That's exactly that because you were taking you you took those, put them together, embellished them with the craft foam, and mm -hmm. embellished them with the uh, foam clay, and then you 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 painted it with some with some rubberizer. Yeah, plastic dip. Um, okay. Plastic dip is also a good item to strengthen the helmet, and also it it's like a primer. Uh huh. Um, it also kind of helps meld together everything that that's been glued on, so it's got something to hold it all together with. Uh -huh. um, the black is good for uh, armor because it can give it more depth. Uh -huh. We have some paints here from U.S. Toy or donated by U.S. US Toy for the stream that you can use. Um, a lot of them are metallics. Yeah, those are those. We didn't have too much of a selection of metallic here in the store at the time. Uh, we we do sell more online at uh, www.ustoy.com, um, but we just got you a selection to be able to play with, and then a couple of sponges. You asked for sponges instead of brushes, and that kind of threw me for a loop. Oh, I do have some brushes here, but I really wanted to try the sponges for texture, uh, uh, because once you put the silver paint on, you have to go back over with like a black just to make it, it looks more three-dimensional that way. And then sometimes you can highlight with a silver or other colors. So you wanna do that lightly and you have to constantly wipe it off once you paint it on. I know that doesn't make any sense. Like it still leaves some paint on the, the armor piece that you're working on, uh -huh. but you want it to be lightly on there when you wipe it off. So you'll slap it on and dab it off. Okay, well, well, we'll take a look at those techniques here in just a second. I, I do want to say one other way that you can definitely paint uh, is with airbrush. And we do have here at US Toy the Pro Air airbrush system. This is a gravity feed airbrush. And we also sell the entire setup from Pro Air. And you too can paint like a pro. Uh, Donna Nowak has been producing some great videos that are uh, go on at her page for Pro Air at noon every day. Uh, but we carry a large selection of uh, Pro Air paints that you can come in and check out and uh, get your stuff stylized uh, very quickly. Uh, and it is uh, great for the body and comes off easily with a little bit of alcohol and then also smells like sour apple. So uh, we're going we're gonna to be doing some painting here with some acrylics. And uh, you're going to paint it on with a brush and then dab it off with a sponge yeah i've got all kinds of weird brushes you can use anything you can use cotton balls um you know whatever you want to paint with you um the technique is dry brushing okay i don't know if anybody's heard of that but what you do is you don't add water to the paint you 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 put the paint in your palette or your bowl or whatever you're using and then you take your brush dip it in there and then thin it out on something either like a rag or your palette uh -huh. and then you're gonna take your piece and just lightly you're just kind of barely making contact with it right yeah and you're gonna do this for a while until like you start seeing you know, the results that you want. Uh -huh. I was, I was, while I was working on this, I was kind of excited that how it turned out that um, if I do some maker fairs in the future, I think I'm going to have this as an activity for the kids to do. Right on. And like right there, I put a little too much gold that I don't like. So I'm going to go in with the sponge and kind of, move the paint around or dab it around. Also, if you want it textured, this the sponge is great for adding some texture. Mm -hmm. I'm stand up a little bit. There we go. So that's definitely adding some character and depth yeah, I'm kind of surprised the webcam's picking it up because it's like it looks good on this end. Uh -huh. 
and try to do them in thin layers because otherwise, I mean, it won't look bad if you slap it all on there. It just won't have that three dimensional look like that you would like. Mm -hmm. And so this technique is called dry brushing for, for those who aren't familiar with it. Uh huh. What, 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 is there a, such a thing as wet brushing? Is that just? I, I don't know. I, I just heard okay. people call this dry brushing. So okay. that is what I call it. Yeah. Well, you, you're the one with the art degree. So I'm going to go with your expertise. I actually didn't learn that in art school. I think I learned that from uh, Evil Ted. I uh -huh. think there's been so many different teachers online that I've, I've looked at. So it could be from Evil Ted. Sure. There's so many different resources out there for people to check out. Uh -huh. And that's what we're hoping is, is this is one more one more place people can turn to and see uh, what's going on. Man, that is turning out real nice. Yeah, it looks so cool. I'm glad this is turning out so well. I'm actually really excited. I was trying to wear this helmet earlier, but it's actually more kid size. So. Uh -huh. You'll have to, if you want to do this for an adult, you might have to go get a helmet that fits better for an adult. Yeah. So by, by the time you add the extra craft foam on the inside and everything else, uh, you want to make sure to get a helmet that's much oversized for your, for your head, right? <laughs> it doesn't have to be oversized. Um, but if it is oversized and you want it to fit, um, I usually take like one of those cleaning sponges they're blue uh -huh. and you, you glue it on the inside the same way you do everything else with the contact cement. And that way, when you sit it on your head, uh, the sponge acts as a, like a, you know, leverage thing to hold it in place. So it doesn't move around. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm not sure if you can see there's the black matte black side. And then yeah, and that's just one layer. Difference. Yeah. yeah, there's only one. That's just one layer, and you just you just keep going and going until you're happy with it. If it starts getting a little too goldish, then you go back over with like a black um, uh -huh. acrylic and just fill in like the the deep parts. Uh -huh. But look at that that helmet. You know the one we got from US Toy. It don't even look like the same helmet. Look at that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, that's just fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so what what kind of things do you keep near you when you are crafting just so just so you are ready to rock and roll at a, at a, a moment's notice? Um, could you say that one more time? You went all robotic for a second. Oh, what are the supplies that you keep in your in your supply? Oh, what do you, what do you keep near you? Yeah. Um, I always have a heat gun and the box cutter blades. Um, and since I have the box cutter blades, you always have to have the, um, knife sharpener. There's so many cosplayers that like, I love you to death, but every time you don't sharpen your blades and you cut some foam and it's all jaggedy, I, my face twitches because how do you glue that together? It's going to, it's not going to match up like with all the jaggedy edges. All you have to do is just a, a few swipes on the knife sharpener, which isn't very expensive, and you'll get a clean cut line, and it'll line up perfectly for you. Please do that for Auntie Valkyrie. She, she would appreciate it. There you go. Hey, uh, Dustin is asking, how do you seal the paint once it's done? Do you need to seal the paint? Um, you can go over with a, a matte clear spray, acrylic spray, that way, because sometimes you'll scratch up against things when you're storing your your costumes or you throw it in the car and you'll get like a scratch or whatever so if you just put on like a, a clear coat that um protects it then you're good and then for the the headpiece um this was just really quick i'm not like the hugest fan of it I think I'm going to go back over with a bunch of twine and I'm going to cut little strips of twine and glue it on here. So it looks more like hair, like horse hair. 
uh -huh. and then I'm going to spray that red with like red spray paint and I'll probably go in with like a brush and use some dark areas with acrylic paint just to make it like really pop. Uh -huh. So, so that's just a couple pieces of craft foam that you cut and designed out. Yeah. That's just the, the craft foam you provided. I, I made a pattern, like a really quick pattern and I cut it out and then, um, Instead of using a knife, like I said, I've been trying to stick to simple stuff. I, I just opened my scissors like this mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. scored it. Okay, very groovy. You could do another sticker. Yeah, let's do one more sticker. All right. Do you got do you got a thing? Otherwise, I can try to think of something. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what. We're going to pick one at random. Uh, everyone, just uh, put in the comments. Uh, oh, Captain, my Captain. <laughs> and, you don't know how much that tickles my fancy. <laughs> and, and then uh, so and then uh, Valkyrie is going to pick one of you, and she's going to contact you, send you the link, and you're going to choose a sticker, and she'll send it to you. <laughs> and then uh, hopefully while you're there, you've been selling a lot of T-shirts, some of the designs that you've been making. Yeah, I'm so happy. People, okay, so uh, a lot of women like, you know, mermaids and unicorns and stuff. And then I look around and there's no Valkyrie things because I've noticed a lot of men are more into like the Norseman Viking thing. I don't know why. I guess it's more masculine. But I like that type of thing, and I didn't see it anywhere for girls. So I started making my girly version of like warrior princesses and stuff. I wish I'd watched Xena when I was a kid. My dad watched Hercules. I probably would have loved Xena. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was great. It was great. And uh, you, everyone should totally check out Xena, Warrior Princess. And, and you should too now. Yeah, I should while quarantine. <laughs> but I'm always uh -huh. working, I'm always drawing and doing uh -huh. something. Well, luckily, it's it's a quality enough show that you can uh, do all that and just have it running in the background. And so, oh, that is. It. Let's take a look at, at what you got now. Okay, well, there's the matte black side. Uh huh. And there's that's still like the first layer of gold. Sure, that's absolutely fantastic. That looks so, cool, I, man. Uh, <laughs> Turned nope. out good. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. how, how, how many layers of gold do you think you'll do for a finished product uh several um uh -huh. i do at least i think 10 to 15 layers it takes a little bit you let it dry between uh -huh. so i'm trying to i know acrylics dry pretty fast but i'm still trying to like not paint repaint over the 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 wet stuff because it's just going to move it around the wrong way Nice. Okay, now I'm going to go in for a second layer. I'm only painting this one side because I want to see the difference between the matte black and the gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, this is just a helmet. Imagine getting some cheapy, like, spirit store costume stuff from U.S. Toy and then, like, doing what I've just shown you. You'll have, like, a full set of cosplay armor for super cheap that you did yourself. So, so uh, we're going to, I'm going to take advantage of that right now. We do have costumes on sale uh for 75 percent off just stuff that has been sticking around in our budget or in our back room that we are trying to get out of our stock so uh come visit us from 10 a.m to 6 p.m seven days a week here at us toy costume and magic uh you can you can ask to see the selection they are right at the front and uh you know there's a number of things that you can work with and then take it over to uh, the U.S. toy side and see what kind of crafting supplies you need that you've worked with. Otherwise, everything that you've used today is easily accessible through craft stores and hobby stores, right? Yeah, I I don't have a lot of money. I have bills to pay. So I tried to right. be creative with as cheap of materials as I can. And I like to tell that to the parents who are doing crafts with kids because, you know, you want the kids to use the crafts because sometimes you'll buy stuff and they don't use it or don't use it for very long. So I try to do the cheapest option available to teach people how to do stuff. And that way, when you get really good, then if you want to go crazy and spend a bunch on Black War Blood, you know, go for it. <laughs> right on. 
Well, hey, uh, we're, we're here at 55 minutes, so I'm going to start wrapping things up. Valkyrie, thank you so much for giving us your time. Oh, my gosh. They're the, the beginning and the end. Uh, and you still got some stuff. I hope you'll post pictures for us when you get done with that project. <laughs> and, I've been uh, trying to do a, a, a time lapse. I really love time lapses. And I'll uh -huh. post those online. Uh-huh. Very groovy. This is so beautiful. Oh. I think I'll work on it the rest of the day. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, well, thank you for, for giving us your time and talents and wisdom and, and uh, some of your education. And uh, folks, make sure you check out her Redbubble site. Uh, get yourself a T-shirt, get some stuff. And uh, man, that's very, very awesome. I, I dig that a lot. Um, we are uh, here at U.S. Toy Costume and Magic. 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. We've got the Rockstar wigs that we talked about today. We've got Pro Air Gravity Airbrush. We've got the uh, Chunky Glitter from Vivid Glitter and everything else. So we want you to come check out the selection. We've got some of the thermoplastics and all sorts of cosplay crafting materials here at US Toy. Um, we want to, uh, once again, thank Planet Comic Con. Uh, John, thank you for uh, tuning in and, and chatting Thank you for us. the compliment, John. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, you really have taken one of our. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you've taken one of our very basic pieces and, and made it into a, a strong costuming piece, and I'd love I'd love to see that uh, done with a lot of things that we've got here at the store, and, and we'd love to see everyone come in and uh, pick something up and turn it into something like that. Yeah. Uh, thank Thank you so much, Planet Comic Con piece AK. PC Casey TV, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here. Uh, next week, uh, Crazy Costumes with Bruce Holt. We're going to be watching some more foam smithing going on. Just look, he's got some of that amazing, beautiful work. You see that uh, first picture there with that alien head. We're going to see the creation and work on that. Uh, Crazy Costumes with Bruce Holt here next week, Sunday at 2. Uh, Tuesday night, Talking Comics with um, Bill. Uh, and uh, Chris, and they're going to be talking up some stuff. Last week they had Andy Parks. Uh, this week looks like Jeremy Hahn. Oh man, I love that guy. He's got a lot of great stuff going on. So uh, Jeremy Hahn this coming Tuesday. Uh, then Thursday night, Thursday night something special. Uh, looks like Chris is going to be talking to Elizabeth Maxwell and Kara Eberly, a couple of voice artists. Looks like they've both done work on Ruby and a couple other things. So they'll be just fantastic to uh, to get to know and uh, hear some of the crazy things. Maybe we'll get some awesome con stories uh, out of them. Uh, but, you know, keep tuning in to PCKC TV here at Planet Comic Con Facebook page. Uh, we love and miss you all. We want you to make sure for uh, staying safe out there. And we'll see you when, when we can. Uh, and look forward to August and uh, things calming down quite a bit. Uh, Valkyrie, Captain, my Captain, thank you once again. Uh, we will talk to you later and uh, we'll see you more. Thank right. you, folks. Thank you. Sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engines run.